This is the story of how Barnstead International declared war on cancer. Hi, my name is Ryan and I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Gordon Technical Sales and Service. You're watching The Gordon Tech Show, a weekly dive into new products and news for the asphalt industry. And now, on to our story. The year was 1994. The TV show Friends first premiered. We're not going to do that. The National Asphalt Pavement Association was looking for a better way to measure AC content than using solvents. Sure, chlorinated solvents like trichloroethylene were great. They stripped off the asphalt cement from aggregates, often leaving them unchanged. The only problem was is they're really toxic to humans, both in breathing and coming into contact with. There had to be a better way. Now, there were a few different methods that a lab could use besides using solvents to test AC content. You had the nuclear option, but that oven was prone to interference and didn't actually remove the asphalt cement from the aggregate, so there goes doing your gradations. Using an oven and backwang, which took a long, long time. And throwing it in a can with diesel fuel and lighting it on fire. Hey, it did work, and many labs were doing it, unofficially of course. There needed to be a better, safer, and faster alternative to measuring AC content. One that didn't rely on solvents, but also cut down on dirty exhaust. Luckily for us, the National Center for Asphalt Technology had been working on that issue since the early 90s. They discovered through extensive testing that they could take a 1200 gram sample, put it in a specialized furnace, and they could reduce the total burn time of two hours down to about 30 minutes. What they needed was a manufacturer to bring their design to fruition. Barnstead International stepped up to the plate and began to develop the new furnace. This oven was able to burn off all of the asphalt cement from the aggregate, while leaving most of the aggregate intact. This meant that after the test, you could perform gradations. I'm gonna assume that you know what the NCAT ignition oven looks like, but in the off chance that you got here through the YouTube algorithm and it's somehow three in the morning, go to bed. But also here's the picture. Over its development, the NCAT went through four different series changes. We're gonna discuss those here. The 859 series oven was the first model that sold domestically. It was a 240 volt oven that included a 120 volt blower mode inside. Because of the voltage difference, a transformer was included to accommodate for that blower mode. They also had to contend with regulatory and social pressures of the time. They did this by creating two filters, one fine and one coarse, that sat in the chamber inside of a metal basket. On top of those ceramic filters, they included a top heating element, which was designed to burn off the exhaust that made it through those filters. In 1996, the NCAT ignition oven was growing in popularity. Because of this, Barnstead International was having a hard time keeping up with production. In order to eliminate production delays, they went with a 240 volt blower motor to eliminate the need for a transformer. Now, since this is the only change, some people would argue that it didn't do anything for the performance of the oven. But the reality is with less mechanical parts means less chance for breakdowns. By the end of 1996, Barnstead was ramping up for a major overhaul of their NCAT. It was already incredibly popular, and they believed that they could make it an even better, more efficient unit. Their first change was to remove the metal basket from inside of the chamber. This allowed more space inside of the chamber, which meant there was more burn area. It's also the reason that our triple basket exists. The triple basket is designed for larger batch samples. The standard basket, of course, can hold about 1,500 grams comfortably, but when you do a base sample, you end up bunching all of your sample into two baskets, and because they're not spread out evenly, the burns aren't efficient. We added the third basket in order to spread out your sample evenly between all three layers. 
Now, just like our regular baskets, our triple baskets come with an anti-wobble system built in. When you put a basket inside of an NCAD, it doesn't matter what kind of material it's made out of, it's going to bend. This can cause the basket to wobble while it's sitting on the hearth plate. And because the weight changes for each wobble, the NCAD sometimes doesn't know when the test is over. Your burns will keep burning, and unless someone's there to stop it, it never ends. And now, back to the oven. Another change to the 1087 design was to add a dedicated afterburner heating element. This heating element was located outside of the chamber, and it was only used to burn up the exhaust. This means that you can re-add another top element to the chamber, making it that much more efficient. The 1275 series NCAT was the last major change on the NCAT to date. They kept the same design as the 1087, but updated the printer from a Seiko to a Martell. The printer's size was slightly different, so they had to create a new faceplate to accommodate it. When Barnstead International first created the furnace, no, they weren't trying to prevent cancer. The NCAT ignition oven is used worldwide. It's one of the most popular methods for testing AC content. And because of that, it's limited the use of solvents like trichloroethylene. 